Well, Peter, I'm joined now by three MPs, and we're going to talk about skills training and the uh, skills training measures in the budget. And I'm joined by Roger Kuzner, who's a parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Workforce Development. He's also the member for uh, Cape Breton Canso. We're also joined by John Barlow, Alberta MP from Foothills, and also by Richard Cannings, who's from BC, the riding of South Kootenai. Okanagan, West Kootenai. All three of them here to talk jobs uh, and skills development. Roger Kuzner, um, what do you think is the biggest merit in this new Canada training benefit? Oh, the investments that we saw t in today's budget, they were really, they uh, came from uh, an in-depth study that was taken by uh, an advisory group uh, that, that looked at uh, current jobs and jobs of the future and the training that would be required. We know the OE OECD has identified that uh, over the next 10 to 15 years, one in 10 jobs will be lost because of automation. So uh, it, it brings to, to the fore the importance of lifelong learning and investment in skills training and individuals own responsibility to make sure that they have the skills to be successful in the, in the workforce. So uh, when we look at uh, the uh, Canada training benefit. The credit of up to $5,000 over your lifetime, right, for exactly. training. Okay, and then up to four weeks of EI benefits to take training. That's and right. Yep. Okay, um, and and, uh, and that accrues uh, year over year, two hundred and fifty dollars per year, uh, up to a, a minimum of four years, and uh, so, but but that gives you an opportunity, uh, you know, as you're in the workforce, it gives you an opportunity to look down the road. What skills am I going to need to continue to be successful in this field or move to another field? And uh, uh, so you have that pot of money that you have access to. Uh, okay, John Barlow, concern. what do you make of that? What do you make of the program? Well, I think there there's some merits, but there's also some problems. They haven't had a, any negotiation discussion with the provinces. The provinces have to change their legislation to go in line with this. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, they haven't had any uh, discussions with... Uh, with business owners who have already come back and said, you know, what do we do in that four-week leave time? I've got to pay for that. What are the the merits or the metrics around where they can go for training? What training are they going to be doing? As me as a business owner, I'm the one who has to cover the cost of that four-week paid leave. But I think the biggest message with this, uh, Martin, is this is the biggest, most expensive cover-up in Canadian history. A $41 billion cover-up. For them to try and change the channel from the SNC-Lavalin scandals, which everywhere I go, people want to talk about that. This is the most expensive cover-up in Canadian history. Okay, Richard Cannings, about the job training measures in this budget, what do you make of them? Well, everybody agrees that we need more job and skill trainings. There's the issue of the capacity of colleges and institutions to actually do the training. That's one question. The, question, the other question is how many students, how many workers will actually decide to take advantage of that training based on this, or will they just take advantage of it because they were going to do it anyway? You know, this is not a lot of money. You know, some of these programs are very expensive. Uh, when you and it's when you have to accumulate two hundred and fifty dollars a year uh, over four years just to get your initial thousand uh, dollar investment in your training. That's a long time in someone's career, and I think we have to look at ways of getting people trained right now. Um, let's take two of those points, and one of them is the cost. I mean, when we went over the budget measures in the lockup, that's one of the things we asked ourselves. $250 a year uh, that you can, can claim, training can cost a lot more than that. Uh, absolutely, and uh, but that can be le leveraged as well uh, in provisions in uh, the 2016 budget and the 2017 budget. We doubled the uh, amount of grant monies that were available to uh, low-income households. Uh, that was to a benefit of just under half a million Canadians that w went uh, on to study, whether it's post-secondary or some, some type of training. But uh, John's comment is absolutely right. Uh, you know, we have to do this in concert with the, uh, with the provinces and the territories, and, and that has to be, uh, that, that has to be uh, worked. But we know that um, it's about three billion dollars a year that we transfer to the provinces so that they can deliver on a lot of this programming and that hadn't changed in 10 years under the previous conservative government so we've increased that funding uh, in the last budget uh, by a, a, about 600 million dollars annually so uh, you know that leverage with uh, the the uh, investments in this particular uh, budget we think is uh, w it'll it'll be the people the workers in this country will be well served going forward last question to the conservative here uh, John, you know that the, the previous Harper government did bring in measures, similar measures, in terms of retraining people during the, the depths of the 2008-2009 recession, and there were special EI measures that were brought in to try and help retrain people. Uh, is this going to go anyways in terms of Alberta and what we've seen in terms of dislocation of people and unemployment there? 
No, I think we, we brought those measures in. We were coming through one of the worst global recessions in history, and those were needed measures at those at that time. But again, this is much ado about nothing unless they can come to an agreement with the provinces to make this happen. So it's, it's a great window dressing, but once again with the Liberal government, there's lots of window dressing, but not a lot of substance behind it. And five, like you said, $250 a year, they're going to be paying that back in spades when it comes to increased taxes to pay for all these other programs with a $20 billion deficit again for a fourth year in a row. Richard Canning, with a Labour background of the NDP, I was just talking to the CLC in the budget lockup, and the uh, head of the CLC says what he likes about this program is it actually recognizes and enshrines training as a right. Yeah, of course, and that's, you know, we're looking at the jobs of the future, and the jobs of the future will require a lot more training, and this makes little tentative steps toward that, but as I say, and as we were talking, the colleges and the institutions that are developed, that will be putting this training uh, together need more funding. Uh, Roger tried to blame it on the Conservatives. It goes way beyond, back beyond that. It's been over the last 25 years that governments have lowered their investments in post-secondary education and the uh, tuition fees have risen as a result. And with tuition fees rising, you have rising student debt and that will continue to happen. Okay, well, Richard Cannings uh, and John Barlow and Roger Cousin, I want to thank you, all three of you, for coming down here one level down in what is a very tumultuous time upstairs right now as we speak. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks very much. Anytime. Thank you. Yeah.